Hello, and we're back. Now we are going to look at uh, the difference between a linear and a nonlinear system. Talk about how we define that. So far, we have talked about linear time invariant systems. And the time invariant part means that the system is not changing. So, not changing over time. So that's relatively straightforward. What about the linear part? So what does linear mean? Well, if we go by the mathematical definition, it means two things. It means the system has to follow superposition. And if you recall what this means, say you have an input of u1, and you put it into a system, and your system outputs y1, and then you change the input, you make it u2, and your system gives you a different output, y2. Superposition just means that when you add the two inputs, so u1 plus u2, your output has to equal the output from the first input added to the second output. So this is the basic definition for superposition. Okay, so if your system follows that, then we're looking good. There's one more aspect of it. The system also has to be homogeneous. So okay, so what does this mean for a system? Well, similarly, if we start with some input here, we get an output of y. If we then scale the input, so a here is a scalar, then there is the u, u, then our output will also be scaled by the same amount. So if you're a math person, these two definitions, uh, superposition and homogeneity, are the requirements for a linear system. And what this looks like if you're more of a graphical person, graphical, then we can think about it like this. So we have our input here, u, and let's put the output here. It's y. What this means for in a graph of input versus output, and here is zero, a linear system essentially looks like this. And if you break this down, you'll see that this system will follow these two rules. And with all of our examples, we put in a certain input, we get a certain output back, and then we change it by a certain amount, everything is linear. But in real life, not every system is linear. In fact, most systems are nonlinear. And what does this what does this mean? So maybe you have a system where, you know, initially you put in some input and absolutely nothing happens. You need to put in a larger input before the system starts to react. So kind of this dead region here, and then it begins to act as a linear system. Because this is not going through zero, that's actually a nonlinear system. And there's lots of other examples of nonlinear systems. So let's think of one. Valerie, can you think of a good nonlinear system? What? No, we, we cannot use the input as the number of drinks you've had and the output as how fun the party is. What kind of example are you setting? Although that is a valid nonlinear system. Let's do something a little different. Let's say the input is the amount of caffeine you've had to stay awake to do all of your schoolwork. Okay, so the amount of caffeine is your input and your ability to focus is your output. So maybe actually you can you know, focus a little bit without any caffeine. So we put in a little bit of caffeine and uh, maybe you, you know, are really good at focusing, but if you have too much caffeine, it'll start to actually decrease. So here's an example of a nonlinear system based on how much caffeine you have and how well you can focus. I really wish that this were not a linear system. 
Ah, oh, that would be wonderful. But then we have a nonlinear system. Lots of systems are like this. How do we analyze it? Well, so far we've only looked at linear systems, and most of the techniques that we're going to use are actually for linear systems. So what do we do? Well, what we'll learn how to do is to look at a certain operating point. So we'll find a place where we want to examine further, and we'll actually work on forcing the system to be a linear system. So we call this linearization. So the next couple parts we'll be looking at how to linearize a nonlinear system so that we can do some more analysis on it.